Coming up this morning on Daybreak, occupancy limits at local businesses are scaled back for the next phase in Springfield. We'll hear what local restaurant owners have to say about the extension of current capacity limits. And the current pandemic isn't going to stop an annual festival from happening, although it will look a little different this year. We'll have these stories and much more coming up for you this morning on Daybreak. It is 6 o'clock on that alarm clock as you are waking up. Thanks for being here. It is July 15th. I'm Heather Lewis filling in for Joe and Jen once again. Meteorologist Beth Finello also here to get our day started with the weather. And it's a hot one, we know, but something else that you really haven't had a say in quite some time is we might see some rain showers. I know. It's been so dry after a very wet spring. Mm -hmm. Things were dry for the month of June, drier for July, and we're just in this very dry, hot pattern. And I think that's when we're going to start to see temperatures really flirt with that 100. It's been six years. Yeah, you know, that that's the thing. Even when we get the rain chances, it just makes it hotter and muggier. There's no relief with the I cool know. weather behind it this go around. And we don't get any relief in the overnight either. I think mm -hmm. that's, for me, the worst part is because you you're hot all through the night unless your AC is just really cranking at 65. Boy. <laughs> yeah, I need a comforter with that kind of. You crank it down that much? Uh, usually it's like 68. Okay, well, still, yeah. that's not bad. No, not it's bad. cold in my apartment. Yeah. Uh, it's not cold outside, though. It's hot, it's humid. We've got a couple of showers out there this morning. We've got a few clouds as well. Looking outside, look at this, so beautiful, but it's so hot. 77 degrees in Springfield, 75 is our dew point. I mean, it's soupy, it's muggy, and that's not going to change through the day today. We're looking at 78 in Joplin, 76 in Monette, 73 in Branson, 75 in Rollins, 76 in West Plains. Dew points in the 70s, we are in that top tier of the muggy meter, a very soupy, a very humid air mass. As you head out the door, just grab the umbrella. We do have a few showers out there, and keep it handy because we do have storm chances for for this afternoon. Temperatures are going to top off in the middle 90s. We'll have feel like temperatures by this afternoon in the triple digits. I've got shower chances through the day today. I think the healthiest will be this afternoon, especially to the north and to the east, where we do have a severe threat to talk about. What's happening is a front starting to push through. That's what's bringing us these showers this morning. We'll have additional showers and storms this afternoon. Those could bring us a severe threat with hail and wind being those primary threats. And then we'll do that all over again tomorrow, but the threat tomorrow looks a little bit lower. Then the extreme heat really starts to kick on Friday, and we keep those extreme heat chances through the weekend into the beginning of next week. Temperatures are going to top off in the upper 90s. I'll have your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, let's take a look at some of the headlines making news on this Wednesday morning. The Greene County Sheriff's Office is looking for a missing teenager. Kimberly Faye Nichols was reported by her family as a runaway. She was last seen leaving her home in the 4800 block of East Utica Street in Springfield. Kimberly is 15 years old with brown hair and brown eyes. Here's a picture of her. She was last seen wearing pink sweatpants, a gray tank top and black tennis shoes. Anyone with information is asked to contact authorities immediately. Well, when the mask ordinance passed at City Council Monday night, not only will Springfield residents be required to wear a mask in public, but the capacity limits at restaurants and other businesses will also be extended. The city outlined phases with limited occupancy through July, but now it will be extended along with that masking ordinance. Restaurants in Springfield, such as Bambino's Cafe and the History Museum on the Square, both say they don't expect a big impact from this ordinance because they've already been enforcing those rules since reopening. The employees at Bambino's and the History Museum already all wear masks. Krista Adams, director of development at the History Museum on the Square, says they really just have to change masking from strongly encouraged to required. As for Bambino's, a server says customers having to wear a mask makes her feel more comfortable. I don't think a lot will change for the servers personally, but having people coming in and wearing masks will make us feel a little safer, and I think it's a great idea. Since we reopened, we have required all of our staff our and our volunteers to wear masks, and we've also strongly encouraged our, um, our visitors to wear masks also, and that's for, for their safety and for the, the safety of our staff and our volunteers. Bambinos and the History Museum say they are doing well, even with limited capacity. Adam says the museum is such a large facility that can still hold a big amount of people at the museum at any one time. 
so far, everyone's been very respectful and we don't really anticipate having any issues with having a mask ordinance in the city. In the first couple of weeks when we opened dine-in and had the seat limitations, it was, um, it was a little slow, but once the word got out, it's been pretty steady and we've been lucky. It makes me feel safer that we're still distanced and uh, I think business will be okay <laughs> based on the limitations staying in place. Well, tomorrow, the Branson Board of Aldermen will be holding a special meeting to discuss a new ordinance that would require the public to wear a mask or a face covering. Last night, the board listened to a few citizens' views on masking, and after public comment, the mayor reminded board members they were elected to make decisions and that any absentee, absentee vote on Thursday by a board member can be recast as a no vote. Turning to education coverage now, we are getting a first look at some big potential changes for students at Springfield Public Schools. Board members met last night to discuss ongoing plans for the fall semester reentry. So here's a few takeaways. SPS is considering three back to school options, fully seated classes, fully virtual classes, and a hybrid option consisting of two days seated and three days virtual. SPS made it clear it wants students back in class. Survey statistics show the vast majority of teachers and parents want the same, more than 90%. Board members are expecting significant academic, social, and emotional loss for students who are not in class. The district also wants face coverings required for all teachers, staff, and students in grades 6 through 12. They're recommended for younger kids too, but required while on buses, which parents will have to pre-register for. And if your student is in class, it will look a little bit different this year. Kids will social distance during large gatherings. Meals will be pre-packaged and schools will be deep cleaned regularly. The district has a comprehensive COVID-19 outbreak plan as well. Finally, the district also wants to address equality issues in school. Teachers can expect cultural consciousness training. Some students may get instruction on, quote, justice and anti-racism. No specifics on this were given. But we want to reiterate, none of this has been approved. It's just ideas being presented to the school board. A full vote will likely happen later this month. In more local news for you now, Republic Mayor Jeff Ussery announced his resignation from the Republic City Council. He was elected back in April of 2017 and re-elected in April of this year. He released a statement which reads in part, quote, I feel proud of what we have accomplished since 2017 and also confident in the ability of the staff and council to keep it going. Republic is my home and I love it along with the people I have had an opportunity to serve. The mayor says that he is stepping down to focus on his family and his full-time career. His last council meeting will be Tuesday, July 21st. Matt Russell will fill in the seat until a new mayor is elected. After helping area youth charities for 12 years, the youth of the Ozarks thrift store has announced it will be closing its doors. Having sat on the corner of Glenstone and Blaine Street for the last eight years, owner Ken Childers says the effects from the pandemic have just had too big of an effect on business for them to stay open. Childers says the initial shutdown for non-essential businesses was just the beginning as it was the start of their busiest time, garage sale season. But he says mostly it was a concern over having to send employees to people's homes to pick up donations. The money made would help pay bills for youth charities and Childers says their customers would benefit too. Well, just the other day we had somebody come in and say, hey, after my divorce, when I had nothing and I had to start completely over, I got furniture from you guys. Now I'm fully employed. I'm leading this, you know, so even if there was years in between when we first helped them, they still honored us. They still came and they still looked for great deals and wanted to help out kids. The store has liquidation sales to clear everything out by the end of July. Well, new this morning, the Butterfly Festival, an event held every year by the Springfield Botanical Garden and Friends of the Garden, has moved online. Color 10's Madison Heaver talked with the organizers. Madison, why did they decide to move this to a virtual festival this year? Yeah, Heather, they decided to go virtual to limit interaction at the garden and Butterfly House. They say while this year is different, they still wanted to offer educational opportunities to supporters. 
This is our 11th year of hosting the uh, Friends of the Garden Butterfly Festival. So typically each year uh, we would have a festival on site. It would typically be on a Saturday in June where we would have people to come out for free to learn about butterflies in dynamic ways. So that could be activities, doing tours of the butterfly house, and uh, really a lot of hands-on learning. But this year, due to COVID-19, we have had to change that up. Trista Herzog is the executive director of Friends of the Garden. She says because of COVID-19, moving to a virtual festival just made sense. We took a page from the book of other nonprofits in the area to, to go virtual. Um, and it, it is definitely challenging <laughs> and uh, really making us rethink of things on uh, the way that we fundraise, the way that we educate. One employee at the Butterfly House says they still wanted to be able to offer some fun and educate. The festival was a lot of hands-on activities, a lot of um, demonstrations, a lot of uh, things you would want to see or want to touch. Um, but now, so we're just trying to give that to you in a different form online so you can uh, you know, so you can see what we got going on and maybe try to come out here in your spare time. Each day we're having maybe a handful of activities that we'll film um, and put online for viewers to watch. We'll have videos from um, our master gardeners. We'll have videos from years past in our butterfly festivals, videos with some of our docents here who can tell us a lot about um, that the metamorphosis process. And uh, we'll also have activities and crafts that are put on by the Young Sprouts in the garden, uh, which is a Master Gardener's educational program. It is so important that we uh, are good stewards of pollinators and we want to continue uh, to make that clear and evident to our community. This is what it's all about. This is why we do it. The festival is going on until Saturday, July 18th. If you'd like to participate in the festival, you can do so by visiting the Friends of the Garden website, which is linked at the bottom of the story on our website, ozarksfirst.com. Here's a live look outside. Things are just slightly wet. We've got a couple of showers and sprinkles out there. Nothing to worry about this morning. We do have a chance, though, for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon, especially up to our north and to our east. Those could pose a threat for some severe weather, specifically damaging winds and large hail. I'll have details on that. Plus, the extreme heat really starts to kick by Friday. I'll have that right after the break.